Hello everyone and welcome back to a, a new topic in uh, Microsoft Word 2013. We have a new lecture today. Uh, before we get started with uh, the new lecture, I would like to mention the difference between uh, Word 2010 and Word 2013 uh, in regard to the tabs that we finished so far. If you remember last lecture, we talked about the we already uh, showed the difference between a uh, file in 2013 and 2010. We showed the difference between uh, home in 2010 and 2013. Also, we covered the insert. However, we did not show the difference in design and page layout. Remember that we have references, mailing, review, and view uh, left. So uh, to show the difference, I need to uh, open uh, Microsoft Word 2000. Uh, 10 and then uh, first uh, let's go back to the home tab look in 2000 this is 2010 uh, in the home tab under the styles in the home tab under the styles group I have a change styles do you see here there is something that's called style set uh, colors fonts paragraph spacing and then set default all right now let's go look at uh, Office Word 2013 if I go to the home tab I, I don't see the style set I see the styles which is the part that you see here this is the same thing but I don't see this one so going back here where is the style set so in 2013 Microsoft said do you know what let's create a new tab that is called what that is called design now please pay attention to design tab in 2013 and then i will go ahead and open office 2010 do you see a design tab no you don't see a design tab so now you know that in 2013 microsoft decided to create a new tab that is called uh, design all right and in the design tab microsoft microsoft said do you know what let's put the themes Let's put the document formatting uh, and then do you remember the style set that was in the home tab in 2010 Microsoft decided to take it and put it inside the design tab uh, and you have uh, colors you have fonts you have paragraph spacing you have uh, effects and set as default and you have uh, watermark you have page color and you have the page uh, border as well so looking at what we have here this is something that Microsoft decide, decided to put together please look at the elements under the design tab you have themes you have the document formatting you have color you have fonts you have paragraph spacing effects set as default and then you have watermark page color and page border now let's go look at 2010 if I go to the home tab and then click on the uh, change style I see some of the design tab listed here however if I click on the page layout here is themes here is color fonts effects right and Microsoft decided to take the page background from the page layout tab from the page layout tab and put it in a new tab that is called design so Microsoft took the page layout the page uh, background group from the page layout tab also took the themes colors uh, font effects which is the theme themes group from the page layout and created a new tab that is called what that is called the design tab so if i uh, minimize 2010 and go back to 2013 if i click on the design tab here is the themes here is the uh, document formatting color font paragraph watermark page color page for a uh, page uh, border now if i click on page layout please pay attention to page layout okay in page layout in 2013 microsoft decided to take out the themes group and put it where put it in the design that's why you see the themes group here right and it it, it added it under the document formatting uh, group so there is a new group going to here back and microsoft also decided to take 
out the uh, watermark, the page border, and put all of that in the design tab here under the page background, uh, page color, page border and watermark if you look at 2010 in here you will notice that the page layout has everything together in one place so Microsoft decided to take this one this group and this group right and create a new tab that is called design and added this in there so basically they are the same but we have an extra tab that is called design. So let's clo close uh, to the before we close 2010. Let's look at the reference as well. Uh, I think the reference is the same. Uh, no major change. So this is 2010. Look at the references references tab. I have these commands here. If I minimize and then go to 2010 and open the references tab same thing same thing microsoft said you know what let's leave this as is don't make any changes uh, mailing i believe the same thing as well look at pay attention i might be missing something so now look and then look at 2010 and go to mailings right same thing same thing right now what about review look at review pay attention to review and then look at uh, review under 2013 so under review same thing uh, look at view tab view tab this is in 2013 let's compare the view tab in 2010 and now we looked at the differences in both uh, cases so basically things got moved around so please uh, remember uh, before i close 2010 look at the tabs in 2010 all right so you don't have a design tab and all of the tabs here are listed if I close this one and then go to 2013 look I have a new tab that's called design and basically Microsoft decided to take from the home tab the style set from here and add it to the design tab here as you can see and then in the layout also you don't see anything that has to do with the uh, page background if you go to the design you will see it listed here page background and the themes as well all right are we good okay so now uh, page layout we already completed page layout so we are done with this one and let's go ahead and click on references are you ready to learn something new so starting from this point we will start looking at uh, a new uh, item which is the references tab all right by looking at the references tab i need first to have some text so i will uh, use my magic formula uh, equals rnd open close parentheses and then i press enter now i have some text inside my documents having this text uh, let's say I will add uh, a title for each uh, paragraph. So I will uh, go to, to the beginning of each paragraph, press enter, and then uh, type uh, any any heading or any title for each paragraph. Just for the sake of demonstration, you don't have to do something uh, special, just something simple as you see me doing uh, right now. So I will uh, add one more here and going uh, down here and i will uh, post all of them so i have one two three four all right so now i will start adding some format i need to apply heading one to this one so where do i need to go to apply heading one uh, do you remember from previous lectures so this is a kind of review you go to home tab and then heading one all right now highlight two maybe heading one again all right now three let's make this one heading two uh, four let's make it uh, heading two as well and then uh, five let's make it uh, heading three or title it's up to you so now we have different headings all right now let's look let's look when i click on a, a, a format here if you go to the home tab and then click on uh, under the editing group click on select and then it choose select all it's like pressing ctrl a now if i uh, click beside one 
and then it choose select and then it choose here uh, select all text with similar format look because I have this in heading one format and this one in heading for one format both of them are selected okay now let's do uh, that here do you remember this is heading two and this is heading two as well so if I click beside one of them and go to select and then it choose select text with similar formatting do you see what is happening so now you have an idea of what you do with select text with similar format so in the future you can save yourself time also if you have many objects you can choose select objects for example if you have a picture if you have a frame if you have um, a shape or something you can choose select object and you will get look at this uh, this cross here you uh, highlight on top of your objects and they will get uh, selected all right so i will go back here and select all now get out of here now i'm back to my document okay now we need to go back to the point that we left from which item were we covering does anyone remember okay if you don't remember which tab are we covering today we are covering the references tab right and then i decided to do something insert some text before i start talking about table of content contents usually when you build a table of content you need to have some headings and titles inside your documents that's how you generate your table of contents that's why i decided to do something else before i cover table of contents now what if i click at the beginning of one and then press Control enter does anyone remember what will happen that will uh, insert a page break so if i go back up here how do i know that i have a page break here if I go to the home tab and then show the formatting I review as we progress and then if I click at the beginning of the page page break that will put me at the beginning of the page break all right so now which tab are we covering today anyone okay references uh, what if I click on table of contents and wait until I see here automatic table of contents look what is happening it says that you have one which is heading two located in page number two you have two located in page number two three four so that is how you generate a table of contents let's say you uh, added uh, more headings here for example let's say I will copy this one here uh, copy and then go down here paste it control v control c to copy control v to paste and i will call this one here vcc uh, s and then i will save uh, actually before i save and uh, uh, because this is just for, dem for demonstrations that's why i don't want to uh, save it all right now if i go here to update a table all right and then uh, come down here I can that's what you can do you uh, look if you uh, select the table here and then click on update table update entire table and then click OK look what happened it added VCCS that I just inserted the first time it didn't add it because I it chose update page numbers only so if you do choose update entire table that will update the entire table based on any changes so that's basically if you are creating a book if you are making your own book maybe a research paper or a thesis for example and you would like to add a table of content inside your your thesis this is a little bit advanced but you might need it in the future so if you need it in the future come back watch this video and you will be good to go so now we are done with that table of contents all right uh, let's go down here and look at the first page uh, I have some formatting can anyone tell me how do I remove the format that appears in here anyone you go to which tab view tab no uh, layout tab no I don't see anything that has to, to do with show height formatting what about home tab all right now can I click here yes that's correct so now I uh, pressed on hide uh, format now going back to references under references I have 
a, a group that's called footnotes. So I have table of contents were done with it. Now, second one, footnotes. Uh, what if I need to explain, can anyone first, before I keep going, can anyone uh, tell me the difference between footnote and endnote? What is the difference between footnote and endnote? Footnote will get inserted at the bottom of the current page. Endnote will get inserted at the bottom of the document. All right. So let's click on uh, first. I need more text, more text, so that will make it uh, easy to understand. Equals R A N D. Open close parentheses. I need uh, let's say twenty paragraphs and the thirty lines per paragraph. Now I will press enter and look at my document. How many pages do I have right now? Just one second until the page number gets updated. I think I need to just scroll up and down and that will update the page number. Just give it a minute here to refresh. If I go down here and then start scrolling down and up, this should update in a minute. Here, here it goes, it's coming up. Let's click on it. Maybe if I click on it, that will update it. Here is what I have. So for some reason, it's just the application is just acting funny, but if I click on pages, that's how many pages do I have? Look, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 11, 13, 14 pages. I have 14 pages. So if I go to... Now, look, what happened? I have the current uh, page... A number so I just needed to click on the page so it feels what is going on so look at how many pages I have many let's say this is your research paper right now and now I have the navigation uh, open I need to close the navigation so I have more room uh, in uh, let's go to the first page uh, not the table of contents I just need the first page here and I will go to paragraph number one and then let's say I need to explain video, for example. I said video provides. What kind of video? I need to say Microsoft Office Word 2013. But I don't want to uh, add text that is not really needed in here in this location so that uh, the user uh, does not lose the point that I'm trying to explain. So if I click on insert footnote, look what happened. It put me at the end of the current page. I'm in page number two. So it put me at the end of the, of the uh, current page. I will type micro, right? Uh, Microsoft Office Word uh, 2013. So now if I go up here and then go to number one, it says that there is a note and see what happens if I click if I click on this, double click actually, it takes you to the actual note. One, one more time, because I just did it fast, so you might did not, you might not pay attention when I, I did it. So double click on the notes, look what happened. It takes me to the end note right now. Let's demo powerful. So I need to explain something that has to do with end note so references again insert end note look what happened which page which page i am in right now look i am in page 14 if i start typing i will type here strong for example and now i have an end note look i have to go all the way back up so now you know the difference between end notes end note and a footnote uh, if you click on show notes it will show you uh, the notes, right? So keep that in mind. If you go somewhere else in your documents and you, you need to find out if you have some notes in here, it will ask you view footnote or view end note. So let's uh, choose footnote. It will take you to the footnote. All right now let's click on show notes again. It will go to the actual note. Now show end note. It, do you see what is happening? self-explanatory you just watch and learn as I explain right 
So if you click on the lunch box for the footnotes group, it will open the uh, settings so you can change the actual uh, starting points and then you need to uh, also uh, put uh, specify the position you can choose end of document or end of section as you uh, prefer you can also change the actual starting point you can change the number here you can see you can put number you can put abc and so on you can apply that to the whole documents and you can um, restart for each section or make it continuous all right so are we good with with footnotes everyone are we, are we clear on this uh, on this point? So now we are done with the second group and references. Let's look at citation and bibliography. Why do you need to use citation and bibliography? Uh, does anyone know? Yes, you're right. If you are working on a research paper or if you'd like to cite your document or if you'd like to insert a bibliography inside your uh, paper, you can use Microsoft Word 2013 or if you are even using 2010 you can use the uh, citation and bibliography uh, sometimes your professor will ask you uh, please make sure that you start a research paper and make sure that you follow the APA style right so someone will sit down and what is APA style so Microsoft has under references here you have different styles that you can apply uh, to your uh, document let's see when I click on it these are the styles that you can apply to your document so when I choose one style this will apply the settings that has to do with this style format I can choose a different style here let's say I will choose uh, that's a, a popular one MLA so they will ask you either to choose uh, APA or MLA so once you choose MLA that will uh, change the way it uh, change the way your citation and bibliography appear inside your research paper how so to know how you first need let's put it back to its default uh, settings you need to uh, uh, create uh, sources right let's say you are uh, creating a research paper and then you use some books and you need to put a reference you need to add a reference to the book that you used in your research paper that's a very uh, very important uh, way to use and get used to it when you create any research paper in the future that you need to cite your references all right so now if i click on insert citation i don't have any th any citation to add let's say here i would like to say that for example i i took this text from a book and i need to add the name of the book here so you don't have to do it manually you can just go to uh, i don't have anything to to add but you can add new source or you can add placeholder so uh, if you click ok this will add placeholder so in the future that you can come back and uh, fix that so if you don't have even the citation you can insert a placeholder at this point and come back to it and uh, add your citation now let's say uh, i used look now i have the placeholder appear appearing in here but i remove them once i click on them now i can uh, see uh, them one by one so now let's first click on manage sources manage sources do you see my placeholders i can click on placeholder one and then choose delete two choose delete this one here i can take it out of here this one here I can take it delete it this one here I can delete it as well and I will click close so now if I go to uh, add citation here I see just the placeholder first one so now I will go ahead and delete this one and go to manage sources and click on placeholder now I can delete it all right so now manage sources you can click on new look at this list is empty I don't have master list and don't have current list master list usually these are all of the books that I can use inside this document and any other document and maybe documents that I created in the past in current list that's what you are using in this current document right you can click on new and that will start 
uh, giving you the uh, way the option to create a new uh, source so going back here what if I click on insert citation and then choose add new look the placeholder disappear what if I click on add new source once I click on add new source same thing same screen if I click close here and go to manage sources and then click new same exact right same exact screen go close here close here so it's up to you where do you create it from but let's go to manage sources and then click on new now do you need to create a, a website no I need to uh, book for example so it will ask you who is the author I will type here uh, Tony for example and I will the title let's uh, say for example uh, Java basics and the year let's uh, put a year of 2011 uh, city let's make up a city uh, let's call the city San and the publisher uh, San you uh, just making up a name just to have some information and then click on OK usually when I ask you to create a book I will give you some uh, uh, comprehensive details once I click OK so now Tony is in this current list look at the preview for APA citation and that's the citation that will get inserted beside the actual text and that's what will get inserted at the bottom at the bottom of the page when you insert your bibliography so now what if I click close and then go here change the citation to MLA right now I change the citation to MLA I will go to manage uh, sources look at the difference between MLA preview and the previous preview for APA now you know the difference so based on the request from your professor you will uh, choose which uh, style you are required to use however you can change the style from here and uh, now there are two ways when you insert your citation first you need to insert your citation beside the text that you used in your research paper and at the bottom of the page so let's look first beside the text let's say I took this text for example from the Java book for example I will click on insert citation and then choose Tony look that's the first part that you need to specify the name of your book from here and then you go all the way at the end of your by the way does anyone know how can I go to the end of this document anyone control end on the keyboard that will take me to the last section of my uh, document so I can come here and then I click on bibliography and I can insert bibliography, I can insert references, I can insert work cited. So if I click on bibliography, it will add the book information. I did that for only one book. You can go to manage sources. You can click on, uh, maybe let's say you, you, you don't use, you don't want to use uh, this book anymore. Delete it. You can even edit it to change the information. Let's say I... Uh, uh, decided to change the city name for example to Johnson right uh, city and then click OK so now it's asking me this source exists in the in your master list and current document do you want to update both yes so now if I click close now if I come here I need to click update citation now look Johnson City got updated and if I go up here now you know how to add you can even add a web address so if I click on new and then uh, change here from book I can let's say I, I, I got some information from a website Wikipedia for example or a, a website see website and fill in the information you can even choose a sound recording and fill in the information for sound recording you can even change the language right you can uh, show all bibliography fields you can uh, check here right and that will give you more fields that you can add right you can uh, uh, change that by unchecking it and then click ok are we good with bibliography
do you, do you see anything that I need to cover in here? You can even search your bibliography. Sometimes you'll have uh, hundreds of uh, uh, sources. You can search them. You can even sort by author. You can source by year and so on. All right? So, are we clear? And you have the preview here. It tells you what goes as citation beside the actual text that you took from the book and what goes at the bottom of your uh, documents. If I click uh, close, are we clear with citation? Yes, we are clear. All right. What about caption? So let's say uh, sometimes when you read a professional book, these things are very advanced, by the way. So if you are learning it now, you are ahead of many people because we know now things that can allow us to create professional uh, book or professional paper in our academic years. So let's go back to, uh, for, for example, let's say I need to insert a table that is two by two. So now I have a table. What? Go back to references. We need to focus on what we are doing so we don't get lost. Uh, uh, we finished the citation and the bibliography group. So now we are talking about caption. So insert caption. I will first select this table, I will click on insert caption, the caption for this table will be table 1 above the selected item, I can choose that to be below, it's up to you, so if I need to choose below that's fine, click OK. So look at the caption here, so this is the caption of this table, right? So why do I need a caption? Because if you go all the way up here, you can, uh, under the content here, what you can do, you can insert a table of figures and then click OK. You have a table in page number two. So you can create a table of figure section to tell your user what you really have inside your uh, document. You can even add a cross-reference. For example, let's say I am in page number 14 and I need to tell my user please go look at the table when you read this section here so I will go to cross reference and then find my table and then click on table 1 click insert okay and then close look when I go to table 1 it will point out to the name of the figure I have. For example, if I need to add reference, for example, here, uh, I will put that in between uh, parentheses. So the user knows that this is pointing to the figure. So how do you go to this table one? It tells you here, click control. Let me, let me fix this first. You press here, you press control and then click on it. Guess what happened? It took you to the figure. So now we know how to use cross-reference. So we are not a, we are covering uh, the most important elements that you need. All right. Now uh, we will not talk about the index because, uh, and we will not uh, talk about mark citation because we need really to cover something important. Now, uh, if uh, the curriculum permits, we might go back and cover. Uh, these two uh, categories. All right, so now let's click on mailing. So are we done with references? We covered the most important items in references. Let's go to mailings and by looking at mailings here, someone will look at this uh, uh, tab and say, well, I have no idea what to do in here. So to get started, here is what I did. I, I know this is a little bit advanced. We did not cover Excel yet. But I created an Excel sheet that has first name, last name, city, state, zip code. And I added some customer or student's information. Right? And then I saved this. You will learn how to do that when we get to Excel. But if you open Excel, you can start adding the information as you see in here. You just click on any every cell and then keep typing what you see in this video. Right? And then save it as contact.xlsx, right? Now go back to your documents. Press Ctrl A to select everything and then press delete to delete the entire contents of these documents. Now, look what I can do. Let's say 
you are working in uh, a business office or a medical office and the manager asked you to uh, insert appointment or appointment notification to all customers and you need to use the address the contact list that you have you just logged at in the excel sheet how do you auto generate envelopes right and print this information on top of each envelope automatically in almost no time because you already have the information saved in the excel file so here are the steps first make sure that you have a file that says contact here as you can see here dot excel and make sure that it has some data now you go to the mailing tab click on select recipients you can type a new list you can create it from here but i already created my list so i will use an existing list i have the file saved on my desktop and it's called contact i will click open and now it tells it tells me that you have sheet one would you like to import the data from this sheet i will click ok now nothing happened now how do i know that i already imported the records from the excel sheet to my word documents so i can use it in my mail merge uh, task now you click on edit recipient list do you see this is the information for the users i added inside my excel sheet now this is just for verific verification you can uh, remove one or two if you don't want to include these people in your list and then click ok now what do I need to do next you need to start mail merge and then I need to create what I need to create envelopes or you can create labels you can do anything I will just give you one example and you innovate you create different uh, scenarios based on what your manager will ask you to do so this is the size for my envelope you can change the size I will leave everything default and usually in any envelope you put the stamp here you have your contact information here and then or maybe the company's contact information and then the recipient's address in here and then click OK once I click OK look what I get I get the place for my information in any envelope you put your address here and in the middle you put the user so if I click here you see that I have two boxes in the first one here I will put uh, my uh, information and then I will put here one two three uh, main uh, street and uh, I will uh, city Abingdon for example Virginia uh, 24210 so that is my address you do it here once okay now are you going let's say you have 2,000 or 4,000 customers 4,000 customers are you going to list every customer's address in this section I think if you do that you will have another job to just uh, make some envelopes but if you are a professional in Microsoft Word you don't have to waste your time manually doing it you can have Microsoft Word 2013 or 2010 or even 2007 to do the same task I'm going to explain right now so now I already added the list of recipient I started mail merge now let's go ahead and insert fields I need to insert first name have a space you need to press the space on the keyboard and then last name press enter that's basically what you put in the address right or for the address of the recipient this is the recipient address this is the sender address your address come back here insert city space and then maybe enter state space and then zip code all right 
Now, do you see it says first name, last name, city, state, zip code. Where are the customer's information? Or where is the customer information? So to find the customer information, you need to click on finish and merge and then click on edit individual documents. All, make sure that all is selected and then click OK. Look what happened. This is the first, let me make sure that I zoom out so you can see the actual envelope. Look, look, look what is happening. These are the envelopes that were generated very quickly. If I zoom in again, that's the first envelope. If I scroll down, second envelope, look, look, look. Who thinks this is a nice, cool feature? I do. I hope you do as well. All right, so now let's go to references. Actually, we finished the references. Mailing, whoa, we already finished mailing. Uh, I already finished the basics in mailings, all right? We uh, have limited uh, time to cover these options. So if you like to uh, explore on your own, please feel free to do so. If you get stuck at any point and you see any name that you don't understand here, you click on the question mark and start learning by yourself. That's the uh, approach that we need to follow from now on. So we uh, learn as much as as we can. All right. Uh, going back here to Microsoft Word envelope. I will close this uh, envelope. I don't have to save it. Now I have this other uh, envelope. I will go ahead and close this one. I don't need to save it. I will open Microsoft Word one more time. And when I open Microsoft Word, uh, it's coming up. Here you go. Uh, blank documents. So we finished references. We finished the mailing, we compared between 2010 and 2013. Let's look at a review. When I click on review, you will notice that I have spelling and grammar, right? So let's say I have uh, some text here, open close parentheses, enter. Let's say I made a mistake in provides. So I will have a red curly bracket or a red uh, underline if I right click on it I can fix it or if I click on again remember the uh, X that you see on the book if I click on spelling and grammar that will go through the documents I can uh, change maybe I can ignore it but if I need to uh, change it I can change it and look how beautiful it gives you the meaning you can listen do you see? Do you hear? Let's let let me turn up the volume. Now. Provide. Do you hear it? Provide. One more time. Provide. And it's using the Merriam dictionary. Right? You can even go to the website. And if you go to the website, you can start searching for items yourself. This is very nice and you can even change the language. You can look at the meaning. So let's click on a change. Now I'm done. And I have a check mark that says that no proofing errors. All right. So what do we have to do next let's say you need to different find a different name usually in your uh, paper or if you are uh, taking an English class your professor might ask you to uh, use a variety of uh, words that has different meaning to uh, a specific word so uh, or the same meaning for a specific word let's say provides and I would like to find a, a different word that has the same meaning as provides Right click on provides and then it choose uh, synonyms. I can choose deliver, offer, offers, runs, affords, right? 
I can even translate it. I can click on define. It opens the same place, the Merriam Webster dictionary, and I can look at what I was looking a minute ago. All right? So now you know what is define. Uh, you can even uh, open the source here and it tells you here it gives you a comprehensive list for the word that you are uh, checking let's say I would like to uh, translate uh, powerful from one language to another language or uh, you know what is word count you can uh, open it from here or you click on words here that will give you the same exact screen look when I go to review and then click on translate and then it choose the mini translator if I hover on top of powerful now alright let's make sure I have it selected translator click on mini translator is it selected go back to review translator if it is highlighted like that it means it is selected now if I highlight powerful look it gives me the translator to a different language. If I click on play, powerful. it pronounces or it gives me the pronunciation for or it gives me the speech for this uh, word. Again, translate. You can uh, translate the document. If you click on it, it will take you to the Microsoft website and it will uh, take you to microsofttranslator.com here microsofttranslator.com and it will translate it you can choose from one language uh, to let's say from uh, Eng uh, English to a different language here and then you click go and this will look what happened it translated everything to a different language or you can go to a translator.google.com the URL that you see up here I really like this one too this is a very nice uh, translator format or platform that you can use you put your text here and then click on uh, translate from one language to another language close here and then close the uh, uh, thesaurus and going back to review so translate I can even translate only the selected text if you'd like to change the translation language you can click here and then it choose a different language translate from to you can easily do that so we are done with this language you can set proofing language you can change the language preferences by choosing this section here and you can add a new language if you choose a new language you can add it we already covered that at the very beginning when we talked about the backstage view if you remember backstage view uh, uh, now if I close this one here and go back to review uh, do you remember comment let's say I need to add a comment you click on comment and look when you click show comment hide comment show comment do you see this do you see this speech icon here if you click on it it shows you the comment right show comment hide comment you click next it takes you to the next one previous if you need to delete it you can delete it as well so now we are done with comment let's say you are grading a document and you need to keep track of the changes look if I start changing things here this is a new uh, section for example nothing happened but if I delete that and then go to sh uh, track changes and uh, choose track changes here now is it selected yes if I start typing this is a new section do you see this red place here that means that you modified this uh, location and that's very good when you grade the document so if you are a teacher and you are teaching of course you can use the track changes under review to keep track of the changes that you create inside your uh, document uh, you can uh, accept you can reject so if you click on reject you can click on accept and if you accept it let's undo that you can click here and then uh, accept and move reject all 
so this is something go next compare this is basically if you are, co you are comparing two versions of a document okay you can practice doing that if you click on it it will ask you for the original document and the revised document and it will compare them you can uh, use it a feature that is available you can even combine look for the original document revised document and it will combine them so now we are done with the review tab any questions everyone no questions so if you click on the lunch box for tracking here you can choose which option you would like to show which option you would like not to show even advanced options here you can change the color that appears beside the changes and that's something also that you can navigate and explore step by uh, step so click uh, on uh, cancel let's click on the view tab so we are almost done with Microsoft do you know that this is the last tab in Microsoft Word 2013 so we already finished the views you already have to use each view right read and then if I close this view basically read is good when you have a tablet and you would like to swipe with your finger uh, or if you would like to be in a read mode it will open it as a book as you can see here if you go back here and then view again you can uh, change for example the layout page color with show comments show the navigation pane or pane you can edit the documents and once you click edit the documents it will take you to the original view uh, print layout that's the normal uh, web layout outline that will open the outline right if I go back to uh, home or go to view maybe I can change to drafts I can change to print layout so print layout is the standard one we already finished show uh, zooming you can zoom in and zoom out you can it click on 100% you can one page multiple pages right and you can even uh, choose a page width right that will ex expand it one page multiple pages all right uh, I have only one page that's why you don't see different so let's choose one page and multi uh, a page width and then come down here and add more text equals R A N D equals R A N D open close parentheses and 10 paragraphs uh, 30 lines per paragraph press enter <laughs> guess what is happening look why is that happening can anyone why I have read text with uh, underline because under the review I said track changes now if I undo what I just did and then come back here tracks changes is not selected press enter my text is normal so now we know how to get around now if I go to view and choose multiple pages look at that does it make sense to you you can click on new window so that gives you a new window you can click on arrange let's say new window here and we click on view and then click on arrange all do you see what is happening now you get a window on top and a window in the bottom you can look at the text using different windows diff with different views so this has one page this has multiple pages so if I close this one I go back to mine here I can split so let's say you are uh, make sure first I change the page width okay before I split let's remove the split to remove the split you drag it you click on it and drag it inside your documents that will remove the split or you click on split again so now I have a page with the width look at that so let's say you are trying to read one section in page number six and in the bottom section here you need to look at page number uh, three for example 
look at what happened this is can be done using the split click on remove split that will remove the split so by reaching this point we reached the end of our uh, lecture today even we reached the end of Microsoft Word so now we know uh, what is in references tab we know how to use mailing we know how to use uh, review we uh, are Microsoft Office Word 2013 professionals congratulations everyone I am very proud of you that you reached this point get ready for a new topic in Microsoft Office 2013 and I hope you will have a wonderful time. Bye-bye, everyone.